child who survived who isn't scared to paint and who isn't scared to fly who's got the heart of a lion in the beautiful mind this is a poem hey friends in this video i'll teach you how to make a single wave that's pretty simple using my ready to pour paints that are available in my etsy shop these are all pre-mixed and ready to pour no uh, experience is necessary. The first color I'm starting off with is my Poseidon Teal Metallic and what I do is I lay out the shape of my wave first and this can be done I'm using um, a wood panel that's been gessoed but you can use canvas. The second color I'm using is my Starry Night Blue. This is also a metallic and I like to lay down the base of my wave first before I pour a background so there's no background paint on this piece at the moment um, there will be eventually the third color I'm using is my sea foam and that is also a metallic so the base of my wave will be metallic and then the colors I swipe over will be more of a matte so you can get a bit of a contrast with your colors and when it dries it will be very different in texture. I'm just tilting to make sure all the edges are covered and everything looks good and then I will swipe. So before I swipe my colors for my wave I want to start laying down the base color. The base color I'm using for this piece is my Wicked White which is uh, very similar to a titanium white. It has a heavy density um, and I will use this for the whole background. I start with the inside of the wave so that I can keep the curve of it and then I just lay it around the wave so that I can kind of keep that shape intact. I add a little more paint to the middle and that way when I tilt it will kind of keep that circular shape of the wave that I'm looking for and I just make sure that the background is covered really well with the white um, before I continue and I'll leave a link in the bottom of the comments so that way you can if you like any of these colors you can find them in my Etsy shop and the link will be below so they come in different sizes and I just want to make sure I'm tilting to cover all of the empty spaces that I have um, if for some reason I can't tilt far enough but I like my shape I'll always bring it back and add more paint if I need to. So at the top you can see there's a spot that's not really covering. I will come back and add more white to that instead of trying to tilt it and lose the shape of my wave, which is kind of important. So I don't really worry about the spots that aren't getting covered, um, but I do come back around and make sure that they are eventually all covered with paint. So you'll see that I'll add a little more white just so that it keeps and maintains that. There's no empty spots on my panel if you're using a canvas. Um, and that way you have a good start to a base of a wave. And then I'll start to swipe. Before swiping, I just wanna make sure that all my edges are covered and you'll see me do this periodically throughout this video where I kind of just add a little bit of paint here and there and that's really only just to make sure that my edges are covered and then the swipe happens if you're not familiar with swiping a good rule of thumb is a light hand goes a long way so you barely want to touch the surface of your paint with whatever you're swiping with I happen to be using a palette knife it could be a piece of plastic I mean you can really swipe with anything you just want to make sure it's lightweight and your hand is lightly touching it and that will help you with your swiping and all the colors should kind of blend together. One good thing to note is that depending on which direction you're swiping in are which colors you'll bring up. So you'll see me swipe one way and then swipe another way and that's just to get some of the colors back. So you can kind of play with that and see what colors are coming up. If it's too light, you'll see me swipe back over it in the opposite direction and that's only to bring up some of the darker colors that are beneath it. So it kind of reminds me a little bit of velvet when you rub velvet one way you get one texture and when you rub it the other way it gets smoother it's kind of the same thing 
So here I'm adding another color that you can find in my shop. It's the Lapis Lazuli Blue. And this is not a metallic, so this will add some contrast to your wave. I'm also going to be using my Northern Lights Green, which is a very bright green. And I like these colors because it makes it stand out a lot. So when I swipe, the colors won't be so prominent, but they'll be mixed in with the cells. And the cells that I am creating with this, I haven't added anything to my paints. They are mixed with my special blend of pouring medium that you can also find in my shop. And I will leave a link below for that. I also wanted to add a little bit of my snowflake metallic which is kind of like a white but it dries opaque so it won't dry clear and there's a shimmer to it it's almost like when the wave is crashing you kind of want to get that white foam color and a metallic can really do that for you especially when it dries so when you're moving it when it dries it gives it a, a different texture it gives it a different look and the white will help you kind of with that foam aspect of when a, rate, a wave is crashing. I'm also using um, my Go For Gold and that's just to give it a little bit more contrast of lighter colors. I did get some on my panel that I didn't want so easily just scrape it off and add some more white. It's super intuitive. You can add color wherever you feel is necessary. Maybe you don't want to add color. It's totally up to you. Like I said, there's no experience necessary. You're just adding paint and it's very easy to fix mistakes. Here, I'm going to swipe with a little bit of a different palette knife. You'll notice that I do wipe my palette knives in between swipes. So if I lift my palette knife, I will wipe it off no matter what. So in this one, I'm going in one direction, and you'll see as I come back, I come in another direction. And I went a little heavy, so you can see that the paint kind of went over, but that's okay. We'll just wipe it off, and I'll go back and forth, and I will continue to swipe until I'm happy. Here, I'm bringing it back a little to bring the blue back, and like I said, it's just playing with the paint, experimenting, giving it a feel. You don't want to swipe too much because you will start to lose some of your cells. Um, and I eventually end up tilting and just play with it, have fun with it, be super loose with it. There's no rules or rhyme or reason. You're just trying to make waves and that's what life's about. So here I'll just speed up the process and I will continue to swipe until I'm happy. So in my next wipe, I am trying to bring some more of the white into the wave. And again, when you pull the white over the colors, you'll find that cells will happen and the white will become the lacing. Um, I put a little too much white, so now as you can see, I'm bringing it back. And that's what I mean by bringing the colors beneath it by swiping in a different direction. And so that's all things that you need to kind of play with and experiment with. Um, but it's super simple as long as you keep a light hand. Um, I do add a little bit of white in a couple of places that I didn't love and I tilt a little more. So it's just about swiping and tilting until you get the shape and the colors that you want and you go from there. A good thing to note is whatever color your palette knife touches first is what you're going to pull into wherever you're swiping. So in this swipe, I'm pulling the white more into the wave again, and I'm trying to get that contrast of the 3D crashing wave. You can see some cells starting to happen. Um, if I want it a little darker, I can pull it back in the other direction. 
you don't have to do it straight. You can kind of sometimes see me wiggle my palette knife and it's all about touch of hand and how you feel about it. I didn't love the curve in mine, so I added a little white and I tilted a little bit and that will go over the colors. So in retrospect, you actually start to get your curve back by adding a little more white and you know, you can just play with it, um, be free with it. Don't think that there's any rules. It's all about how you feel and it's a very intuitive feeling. So if your body is saying stop swiping, it most likely means to stop swiping. So again, you'll notice me just add a little bit of paint on the edges because I'm using a thin panel, depending on where I touch the edges to tilt, I sometimes lose the paint that are on those edges. So I go back around and make sure that all the edges are covered and all my bases are covered. Here, I want to blow out the edges to make it more look like a windblown wave. So I'll use a straw and I will slightly blow the edges out and that will create kind of a wind effect, if you'd say, but it's more of a light and airy feeling um, as far as the density of the paint. It becomes more like almost a watercolor when it dries rather than, you know, your typical cells and your your colors. So to finish off my wave, I'll just do a little bit of touch up. Um, here you'll see me add a little bit of white so I can get rid of that green on the edge and I'll just pull it off of the edge so that the top of my wave and the base of my wave are two distinct sections and it looks more like a C and not a circle. And that's pretty much the wave. You can learn to surf with me. I have plenty of tutorials coming up. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and comment below. Seems like the more time pass, the less I know. People change, there will be pain. These winds will blow.